Uh, hi, everybody. So I hope you're all doing good and you've been enjoying the uh, Beams uh, session so far. And today um, I'm going to tell you about uh, monitoring. So really monitoring is about all the metrics that are available to you in Dataflow so that you can understand more how your job is performing and also to be alerted if anything goes wrong with your job. So I'm going to present you a few slides uh, talking about metrics for like 10 minutes, and then I'll switch to a demo showing you a job that I've created uh, to show you how you might be using these metrics. OK, so uh, you can think of metrics in data flow in broadly four types. The, what I call the native metrics, uh, which are really metrics about your job. Then the worker metrics, which are the metrics that are about your workers that are running your jobs. Then you have something more, which is called monitoring agent metrics. And then at the end, you have things called custom metrics. Now I will, I will show uh, each of them to you. And pretty much all these metrics show up in what we call cloud monitoring. And cloud monitoring is the product on the Google Cloud Platform uh, that enables you to see and handle metrics and alerts. But also, the most important metrics for your jobs, you're going to see them in the Dataflow UI. So during the presentation, I will show you the two UIs, the Cloud Monitoring and the Dataflow UI. So let's, um, let's look at the native metrics first. So frequently used ones uh, include, uh, is my job failed? So it's called is failed. So you'll see that all these metrics start with dataflow.googleapis.com slash job. Another very important one is the system lag. I'll show you what it is uh, later. You could, but it's basically the latency of your pipeline. pipeline. Uh, you have per stage system lag, if you'd like to have more, uh, like more precise information. You also, you also have the current number of vCPUs. This is really useful to know if your job has auto-scaled or not, how many CPUs it's currently using. Then you have things about the element count or element produced. Uh, this is really how many how many elements are going through your P collections. So you, for example, you could see maybe that uh, a, a, a certain transform has fifty thousand K elements per second. Uh, some metrics then are influenced by time. Uh, these metrics are a little bit less easy to alert on because they're basically uh, multiplied by all the time but it's still useful for monitoring your costs, for instance, because the time, the memory time that you're having, the v vCPU time that you're having directly correlate to the cost that you're paying for your pipeline. Uh, you have some additional uh, metrics if you are using PubSub. So PubSub is our uh, uh, messaging system on GCP. And if you're reading or writing from PubSub, you're going to have access to these metrics, for example, the read latencies or the write lat latencies. And finally, uh, you have some additional metrics that are transversal to GCP, for example, the logging metrics. And uh, the logging metrics will tell you if, you're, if your pipeline is logging a lot. And this is quite important, because if you're logging too much and you're not aware of it, uh, you might actually have some performance problem with your uh, job and also your cost might go higher because uh, logging is usually not, not free. So these are native metrics, very important, the most important. Then you have your worker metrics. You want to know how your different machines are behaving. And you will see that they start with compute.googleapis.com. And uh, they're all about the machines that run your job. So for example, you could go and see the CPU utilization. Uh, you could see information about your disk IO. Are you writing a lot to disk or not? Uh, you could see information about the RAM, the memory that you're using, uh, only for the family E2 uh, of machines, however. Then there's something, it's also transversal to GCP, which is called monitoring agent metrics. The monitoring agent is a little agent that you can install, and it will give you more metrics about your workers. Uh, in Dataflow, it's pretty easy to enable it. You just pass uh, this flag here, enable stack driver agent metrics, and you will be able to see, see them. Uh, however, uh, the metrics that I told you about before are free, but these ones uh, are not. 
And with these agent metrics, you could have a look at CPU utilization also, disk, uh, disk uh, IO also, and you could have access to uh, your memory, even, even if your, fam uh, your machine is not E2. So this might come in handy. And finally, the custom metrics. The custom metrics are metrics that you would define yourself in your own beam code. In Dataflow, you have two types of custom metrics. The counters, which are metrics that can be incremented and decremented. And distributions, which are metric that you would update with new values. And at the end, well, at any time, it would give you statistics about your distribution, like min, max, and average. And here is an example of how you would create your metric and increment your metric inside the process element method of your pipeline. So it's basically just doing inc dot inc to, to increment. And so you will be able to see these metrics in cloud monitoring and on the data flow UI. So remember, uh, native metrics, worker metrics, agent metrics, and custom metrics. Of course, the native metrics are the most important, but with the others, you can you can have access to more information about your job. Okay, let's have a look at the common use cases and let's see what metrics we would use. So has my job failed? You would use the native metrics is failed and you would uh, have a look and see if it's more than zero. However, uh, this is only useful for batch pipelines because for streaming pipelines, your job kind of actually never fails. If something it doesn't work, it will retry, retry forever. So this uh, only works for batch jobs. Is there any lag? Meaning, is my pipeline being slow? And here you would use the native metric system lag, and you could filter only to see your job name or your job ID, or the per stage system lag, which will give you information about the lag for each stage of your pipeline. Then, is there a spike in processing on my pipeline? For this, you could look at the native metrics number num vCPUs. So it will tell you if your job has upscaled or downscaled. Another, another useful thing is to look at the elements count and elements produced count, which is really the throughput. You could look at the throughput for one of your first P collections, maybe the one that is reading from the source. So let's say I'm reading from PubSub. If I look at the throughput of this P collection, it will tell me if more messages than usual are actually being read. By my, by my pipeline. Is data processed fresh or old? So in this case, you would use the data watermark age or the per stage data watermark age. It's basically AKA data freshness, it's the same. What is my CPU utilization? So in this case, you could use the worker metric, uh, CPU utilization, or you could use the agent metric if you installed it. Is my memory close to full? You have the native metric total memory usage time, but it's not easy to alert on because as I said, it increases with time. Uh, so you would rather use, if you're using an E2 machine, you could use the worker um, RAM used uh, metric, or you could use the agent uh, metrics. Uh, the last one I, I would uh, talk about is, is a dependency failing? So let's say usually you have external dependencies in the job. Let's say you're using a cache like Redis on memory store, for instance. The first thing you could do is just use metrics that are not data flow metrics. Use metrics that are specialized for your dependency, like memory store has lots of metrics that you can use. But there are also other solutions. You could use a custom metric so in your code, every time you connect to your dependency, if it fails, you could increment a counter and you could easily um, alert on that. Or the last solution would be to create what we call a log-based metric. And I think Meron on the next session, uh, so stay with us, uh, we'll tell you more about this. Um, a log so in your Beam job, you can actually log things. So you could log, uh, could not connect to my dependency, for instance. And based on this log, you can create a metric. It's called log base metric. And then you can alert on that. Uh, and to finish, 
you it's it's very important to, to to set up alerts when you set up alerts you do two things you choose your policy so for example the mean data freshness has been above 10 minutes for two minutes if this is the case then please alert me then you choose a policy trigger like all conditions are met any condition are met and then you choose your notification channel so it can be email slack webhooks and it can also be PubSub. Uh, your alerts can be sent to PubSub, and you usually use that if you want to integrate with other systems like GCP components or third-party systems. And in this case, your third-party systems or GCP components will come and read from PubSub. So it's useful if you have an, an on-premise alerting system, for instance. Okay, so I'll show you both on the cloud monitoring and the data flow UI uh, what you can do. It's it's just an introduction, of course, but um, it'll be useful. Uh, for this, I've created a job, a data flow job, actually two data flow jobs. One on the left that generates some measures. So you could imagine a factory, some robots in a factory that are creating cars, for instance. And they are sending messages, um, and in, in my case, messages about the pressure uh, of the machines. So I write this to PubSub. And then I have another job that I will show you. And this is the one I'll be using that processes these measures. And if the measures are good, write it to PubSub. And if they're bad, they're going to be writing the, the averages of the pressure into BigQuery. So let's have a look. At the console. So this is uh, my console for Dataflow. And you can see here that these are my jobs that generate uh, messages. I have two instances. And then this is the processing job. So I'll, I will click here. So first, you have the job graph. And here you can see what I'm doing. I'm reading from PubSub. I'm windowing. So this is not a perfect pipeline. It's not a very optimized pipeline uh, on purpose. But it's it could be a real life pipeline. So I'm reading for PubSub, windowing, converting to objects. And here I'm filtering. If the events are bad, they're going to go to a PubSub topic. If the events are good, I'm going to group them by key, the key being the factory. And I'm going to compute the mean every five seconds, the mean of the pressure. And then I will write this uh, to BigQuery. So talking about metrics, I'll go to the job metrics here. But before I do that, I will just go to cloud monitoring before. So if I go to the navigation menu here and go to monitoring, I will open cloud monitoring. So I've already opened it for you here. And you have multiple features here. The metric explorer is, is interesting to like explore some metrics. But then the dashboards are very important to see lots of metrics together. And the alerting is very important, of course, to alert on your different metrics. So. What I'll do here is that I'll show you one metric per type uh, that, that I've told you about. So let's say a native metric. So I will take the system lag, for instance. And I will filter by job ID. And one that interests me is this one. OK, and you see, you can see uh, the system lag here. It's pretty, it's pretty good. One second, uh, five seconds. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty OK. We'll have a look later at, at this more, more in detail. Uh, let's have a look now at a worker metric. So let's say CPU utilization. So I can compute CPU utilization. So here, uh, there is a lot. I will filter by job ID again. I will use the one that is processing. And here you can see uh, the CPU utilization of my different workers. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, it was about 20%. Here it's a little bit more. And when you look at this in the context of your job, you will find it very useful. Uh, then uh, let's have a look at an agent metric. So agent metric, I will type uh, agent memory type here, it's one. And there are lots of them, lots of, you can see here that actually you can see the buffered, the cache, the free, the slab, the used. So 
I will filter by state and I will only have a look at the free one. And here you can see that, you know, it's been changing a little bit. These, these are all my workers, but you can see that towards the end of the job, pretty much all my workers are about 50% of memory consumed. So uh, it's, it's pretty okay. I still have lots of memory available. And finally, a custom metric. So I've created a custom metric in my beam code called bad counter. And it counts the number, it's just a counter that increments every time I see a bad message. And a bad message is a message that has less than one bar of pressure from, from the machine. So I could just type bad counter here. And page flow job, filter. And here you can see my metric is growing. This is expected because I'm just generating random data. So uh, as more as the time grows, my the number of bad uh, messages are just increasing. OK, so as I said, you can alert on this. You can create dashboards. So I created one here for today. And uh, we will get back to it a little bit later. For now, let me get back to the job metrics tab. OK, so this is the most important place that you'll have to go to, to understand uh, your job. So before we get into the details of this job, let me just explain a little bit what the different uh, metrics are. So the data freshness is basically, uh, is your data uh, old? So for instance, uh, let's have a look at here. Here, I see that my data freshness is two minutes. It means that I'm trying to read from PopSub as fast as I can, but my pipeline at this moment is not able to read all the messages as they come. And so they start piling up. And so some of the data becomes uh, becomes old. And basically, this is the maximum. My, the, my, the data that is the oldest is uh, 2.13 minutes old. Uh, so this is pretty bad when it goes up, and it's pretty good when it goes down. System latency is basically if your pipeline is fast or not fast. It's the maximum time that a message spends in your um, uh, in your pipeline. So here, if I look, uh, it's pretty good, four seconds. Sometimes you can see that it's going up. Uh, we, will, we will have a look. Here you can see the auto scaling. So if you've enabled auto scaling, data flow will auto scale for you, so downscale or upscale based on uh, the number of messages that you have, uh, the CPU utilization that is happening. And here you have the throughput. So this is the number of messages uh, that go through your transforms. So for instance, here, I can see that uh, I have about uh, 80,000 elements per second uh, going through my pipeline. And then the CPU utilization, uh, really, really useful. So here I, I see that there's only one curve, uh, which means that I have one worker and it's very utilized. But there I have two, and depending on the moment, I, I have more or less. This is very useful because if you see that some workers are very utilized and some workers are not very utilized, it will mean that you have a hot key problem. It means that you have a key that, ha that have more elements than other keys. And so it goes to one worker, it means that most of your data is actually processed on one worker only. And this is quite bad. It means that your job is not very well parallelized. And in this case, you might want to add a reshuffle phase, for instance, in between some of your steps. OK, since I'm using uh, PubSub, I also have uh, metrics about how I'm reading to PubSub, the request per second that my job is doing, and how I'm writing to PubSub. Uh, OK, maybe let's have a little look. I will zoom a little bit at the beginning here. So at the very beginning, my data freshness is 100 seconds because my job has been, my other job has been generating some messages for about one minute. And so it's the messages have been piling up. Okay? And so this is pretty good. Data freshness uh, uh, goes down uh, to about 18, 15 seconds. Uh, my latency is quite low, one second. And here you see that data flow decides to downscale. It goes from two to one worker. So why did that happen? So basically, it's related to the number of messages that are waiting to be processed. So here, 
the data freshness is pretty good. And if you go down to your CPU utilization, they're not very utilized. So we're good in terms of data freshness, and we're not very utilized. So Dataflow chose to uh, downscale. Uh, and you see that every time you downscale here, you're going to have a little bump in data freshness and in system latency usually, uh, because you have fewer workers. So Dataflow will have to uh, reshuffle the data ar around. So in this case, it will send the data to the first worker. And here we can see that we go down to a nice, uh, a nice time of freshness and latency. So it means that really one worker was probably enough. I had two workers here because I chose when I started my job that I wanted to have two initial work workers. Okay, I'll click here to reset the zoom and let's have a look at another moment. Uh, here we see that there's quite a lot of upscaling and there's quite a lot of uh, uh, data freshness uh, going up. So let's have a look maybe um, maybe from, from here. So you can see that data freshness goes down, but here it's going up. So let's zoom, uh, let's zoom here. Uh, it's going up, uh, it starts, it starts uh, going up already. And even after auto scaling, it's still going up. And so the question here is why is it going up? Uh, and the answer usually is maybe I have just more data coming in into my pipeline. So one way of seeing that, as I explained before, is to look at the throughput of one of your first key collections. So in my case, I will select the reading from pubs up here. And let's look. So before I'm about 132,000 uh, messages per second. And then here, I'm about 150 or something, it depends. So there's been like a 20% increase. It's not very clear here. Um, I will show you how you can make it even clearer. But you can see that there's uh, clearly a difference in throughput, and, and this is why uh, your job um, uh, is scaling. Actually, if I go and look, uh, the thing is, like, if you look at this, the, the throughput here, you don't necessarily have exactly the number of elements that are coming in. You have the number of elements that are consumed by your pipeline. But what PubSub will do is that it will, will not back pressure. It will only consume what it thinks it can process. So sometimes it's not that clear looking at this. But I am lucky because I have cloud monitoring. And uh, I have access to the PubSub topic. And so I have a metric that enables me to see the number of messages that, are, that have been pushed to the PubSub topic. And here you can see on the on the bottom right, that it's much, much clearer. There's been an increase in the number of messages posted uh, to PubSub, a very big increase. And this is why uh, my pipeline started uh, to, um, to have more uh, 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 worse, let's say, uh, data freshness. And now that I'm here, I can show you some of the things that you will not find on the Dataflow UI directly, but you can find here. Uh, for instance, the data freshness per stage can be interesting. So here I can see uh, that I have three stages in my job. And I will show you how I know it. But I know that F12 is my first step, F11 is my second one, and F10 is my third one. And you see that the curves are pretty close together. And this really means that the lateness that you get is due to your first stage. And the next two stage, they're not really adding to your data, to your lateness. So if you wanted to optimize something, you might want to optimize the first stage. So to finish, let me go back. And now that we've seen the job metrics, I'll go back to the job graph here. And you can have uh, actually more information about each step. So if you look here, for instance, you can see the, the throughput. And um, and you can see that the throughput is 79 or 80,000, and the throughput next is the same. But if you, if you had, for example, a throughput that is something, and then you have a throughput that is divided by two just after that, it should tell you, you know, the throughput is really going down. There's something. 
unless I'm really filtering lots of elements in my job, which can be okay. But if I'm not filtering elements and my throughput is going down, it means that the step is very slow. And maybe in your step, you're just, you're just using an external um, database, which is very slow, for instance. So this will, this will be quite useful. If you click on one, you can also see the system lag for one step. You can see the wall time. The wall time is the time that is being spent on this step by all the workers and all the threads. And uh, also, so you have the information of the throughput that comes in this transform and the throughput that comes out of this transform. So if you have a big gap between these two, there is a problem. Your step is really too slow. And at the very bottom here, uh, you have here something that is important. You have the stage in which the step uh, uh, belongs. And so maybe, as you know, sometimes uh, uh, Beam will, or Dataflow will really fuse some of the steps and just run them together. And sometimes you don't want that. For example, if you have a transform that reads few elements and then outputs lots of elements, in this case, you might not want to fuse because you're going to have all your elements been maybe being uh, processed by only one worker. So you might want to add a reshuffle phase, for instance. So looking at the metrics and looking at the metrics per steps, and also if you want more information, looking at the metrics in cloud monitoring gives you really a lot of information uh, and will give you ideas on what's going wrong and how you can optimize it. And so it's good for investigating your pipelines, and it's also good for being alerted if something is going wrong. So very important uh, stuff, and I hope this has given you some uh, insight about what uh, metrics you can use to understand your job. And back to you.